and then reevaluate this in the CBDC itself as a bridging asset to turn all the other things you've got into one. Well, as we see, the private sector and government seem to be moving in sync, as really the implementation is inseparable. Here we have a story from Crypto Flash News talking about crypto's central bank digital currency revolution. Eight nations adopt XRP ledger for digital currencies. Basically, a lot of these firms have turned around and instead of being libertarian solutions, they've turned around to governments and gone, here you go, have our fintech stuff as a layer to put in, like, as a, basically a plug-in so you can create these central bank digital currencies and fuck your population yeah. over. Leveraging the expertise of Ripple and expanding on its former private ledger project, the newly minted platform draws on the capabilities of XRP. This revolutionary development allows central banks, governments, and financial entities to have an unparalleled command over their digital currencies. Notably, within a mere quarter post, it's launched more than eight months. Uh, sorry, more than eight nations, including Russia, Japan, the UAE, New Zealand, and others, are in the process of creating their CBDCs on the XRP ledger. Well, this is XRP's out. This is how the people who made it. And it, this is happening part of Ethereum, too, are given an exit window. They're being subsumed into the system. Oh, the all place. of you hodl bros have had all of your money taken from you by these people, and now they are going to the government and they are building the cage to put you in. Yep. <laughs> Just, Unparalleled the command over their digital currencies. Yes. Yeah. I, I honestly think in the future, people will spit on, like, crypto bros. They will be remembered as, like, the quizlings of the regime who did not understand money. Well, it was, I, I'm so embarrassed by many people who still tacitly try and hang on to the last little bit of rope they've got. You people did this with your hodl and your fun bucks. Well, there you was helped money in normalize it, so of course it. they did. And we, we tried to tell these people years ago, and they flatly refused to listen because they thought they were going to be millionaires. <laughs> Some of them still do. To be yeah. But no, I, it was even the simple elements, though. It's like, well, you know, do you trust the people that quote unquote developed Bitcoin or developed Ethereum? Do you do you trust in them to not hand over the back door to the whole software to the government? And time again, I was told no because there are people. Clearly, they are. <laughs> well, Mastercard calls for crypto companies to join a central bank digital currency partner program. Mastercard is huge, and it's only getting bigger. Uh, it's invited blockchain firms to join its CBDC program to foster collaboration on digital money. Um, this really is kind of a summation of this article here, which is from MasterCard itself. It's called, Is Safe the New Sexy? Central Bank Digital Currencies Trust and the Evolution of Money. And here we see all of the HODL firms effectively building the ovens. <laughs> Um, the inaugural set of partners includes Central Bank Digital Currency Platform, Ripple. It's funny that um, Ripple is now a Central Bank Digital Currency Platform. It's just, that's, uh, that's what it's been transformed as a headline. Yeah. Web3 software company Consensus, yes. multi-CBDC and tokenized asset solution provider Fluency, digital identity technology provider Academia, digital identity consultant Consult Hyperion, Security Technology Group, Gishet, whatever that is, a digital asset operation platform, Firebolt. All of these, I've checked them out. They're all NGO and government-backed, all yeah. of them. They've all received money from NGOs, governments, or from the financial system itself. As we've been through this in torturous detail before, we've been through it with crypto firms before, but all of these people are from the regime itself. We've dug into Let's them so often. Here. Yeah. Uh, CBDC program partner Gisiek plus Devrent. I want to read this bit first. Their efforts want, include yeah. Fluence's work to build interoperability among different central bank digital currencies. Consult Hyperion's work with central banks and payment processes redefine their CBDC requirements. And Ripple's launched by non royal government issued National Stable Coin in collaboration with the Republic of Paolo, in addition uh, to work on force uh, central bank digital uh, pilots. Well, all of this really is going one place, which is one world currency. Well, yeah, I mean, that's that's a further part we can talk in towards the end. It's yeah. just the, the mention there that, I mean, this is exactly what you're talking about, that Gisek Devrin, based in Germany, yeah. has a legacy in public currency that dates back 170 years when it first started printing banknotes. Yeah. 
So it's an asset of established money which has developed itself into the next form of how established money will remain established. Yes, it, it is. But really what we have here is all of the crypto firms being brought in by governments and by large financial institutions. And what they are doing is they are, they are using the, the bits of the fintech in quotes that they like to create these nightmare, effectively all-in-one, um, really social credit score systems in the end. Yep. That, that, that's where all of this is going. Once you have complete control of money in a granular sense, as all of this describes, and you have people like MasterCard who are the layer between you and the central bank, but in a, almost like a play pretend way, they are brought even closer together. Uh, all you have really is this ecosystem in which the fintech firms play, once again, in the central bank sandbox in a predefined set of terms. And all of the people who you were advertising, you know, the, you as I'm, I'm talking to the crypto people, you, you were advertising to us as our uh, money sovereign saviors have turned around and they have worked with governments and MasterCard. They have all just turned around and betrayed you if you are somebody who believes in like digital asset sovereignty in a crypto sense. Th this should be like your apocalypse, but people just seem to be embarrassedly walking away from it or being quiet about it because nobody really wants to admit that they were wrong. Yep. You were wrong. No, no one wants to admit <laughs> I was right. That's the brutal yeah. part. <laughs> um, yeah, it's now very clear that fintech and crypto sphere has served to normalize digital currency, and that's why it's been allowed to play pretend um, as an as, as, a, as a currency. Sorry, central banks and regulators are already making moves to class unbacked crypto as securities and reduce them to the role of shares in a concept. And don't assume this is just a Western mission either. Russia has already adopted a law to enable the start of real world testing for the digital ruble, as have a lot of the countries that are testing like digital currencies have already passed laws that allow them. Yeah, um, but it's okay because El Salvador lets you pay tax on Bitcoin. <laughs> Um, another story here, uh, central, uh, Russia's central bank digital ruble will be classified as a highly viable asset, which means it will have the same standing as cash. Mm, yes, sort of. It's, it means it'll act as cash as a bank deposit, but not cash as it is in your hand. No, 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 no. It will have the same standing. I mean, they're, they're, they're not just doing it in a, in a pilot way. They're doing it in a... Like the money itself has been given legal weight already. Mm -hmm. uh, and I wanted to highlight that because a lot of people talk about based Russia and those people are not particularly intelligent because Russia is still doing a lot of what the other places are doing, a lot of what the West is doing. They're just doing their own version of it. Um, and there, there is no ideological stand against the, the excesses of managerialism in the West from somewhere like Russia. That simply no. doesn't exist. And anyone who tells you that does not have a grasp on the issues or is lying for a different reason. Um, and another point as well that was raised to us in our uh, Telegram, thank you for sending us this, um, is the fact that cash is already being painted as pro-crime and pro-corruption. Um, as illustrated here by the Dutch government's attempts to ban making purchases over 3,000 euros in cash. Which 3,000 euros isn't that much money anymore. Like you can't buy a car. You could uh, for three thousand euros in most places now. In some places you can buy a handbag for that kind of money. Yeah. But see, it's because it's about cash. I mean, there's the the, the line there. Customer research for purchases above ten thousand euros. Do you make a purchase that costs more than ten thousand euros, and do you pay in cash? Then the seller must conduct a customer due diligence or conduct a customer due diligence. This check is mandatory to prevent money laundering and terrorist financing. Yeah. You've got more than £10,000 in cash, you're a terrorist. So cash is no longer legal tender, really. It doesn't have the legal standing anymore. It's a legal tender. Yeah. <laughs> it's... <laughs> but it's, it's very clear that all of these talk about, you know, cash is staying, cash is staying. Well, the standing of cash has already been reduced in many places. This is just a Dutch example, but there's many more examples of how cash is now being used, as we said it would, is now being used as a uh, byword for crime. Um, <laughs> uh, thank you, EC90. Who is going to work for gay digital tokens? Unfortunately, we all are. Yeah. 
<laughs> when gay digital tokens are the only way to access food. Yeah. Uh, um, well, the, a, a quick thing you want to talk about, we might not cover this too because we got a bit long of the tooth smother stuff, but um, how does central bank digital currencies interface with inflation? I mean, I, I consider that a large part of what is going on here is a way to get around some of the problems we discussed in the Infinite Bubble Stream, which is that if you have to engage in any sort of allusion towards the economic system being joined up, yeah, that the amount of you, the amount of money a government spends a year, or a nation spends a year, is accrued money from the previous year that has been stored up and then spent bit by bit and then reaccrued. Yeah. I mean, the, not only does this sound laughable, but it just is nonsense. It couldn't work. No. You know, nowadays it's just not possible. So, in essentially eliminating the last real thing that money was connect to, connected to, which is at least you could see a note form in your hand. If of all of a sudden these notes started having like nine and ten digits on them, you'd realize something was wrong. Yeah. But if every day they can just adjust all the prices and adjust all the margins electronically from a computer instead of actually going physically into your wallet and taking the tenor out to, yeah. st- to curb inflation. You just manage things differently on the back end to the point whereby there's no need for anything economically to make sense anymore because they just play around by how much money you have in your bank account or how much it costs to buy certain goods and what other stipulations are required to buy goods. May that be the purchase of, I don't know, carbon credits elsewhere, or the fact that you can only buy things for X price within your 15-minute city. If you want to buy it from outside of there, it's X plus whatever percentage. Yes, that's, that's a good way of adjusting it as well, in that they, that is the system we'll probably have, in that buying a packet of crisps next to your house is a certain price, but buying it 50 miles away is a much higher price because they're trying to uh, discourage people from traveling for eco reasons. And all of that will be sold as incredibly uncontroversial. Um, and you're, you're, you're right as well in that the MMT people, like they, they salivate over this. Yes. This is their wet dream because they think they can just go in and fiddle with everything infinitely to make all the numbers make sense. You, you pour money in one end and then you digitally burn it up at the other, and then you don't have to calculate the inflation because there's only X amount of money and theory only ever circulates every 12 months. But all you end up doing there is creating a like a, an even faster cycle of malinvestment. Well, yes, what you try to do is make a fully planned economy, and that doesn't work. <laughs> no, it's, it's, it's quite literally just a... I, I hate to say it, but it is a funnel towards actual Soviet economics, but just with a digital layer over it where they're pretending it's not happening. And if